If you are developing an app with multiple drop-down boxes and you want the drop-down options available to the users to dynamically change based on their selection from the previous one, then you are actually trying to create a dynamic dependent drop-down. And this is actually one of the most common requirements for most apps in almost every platform. And in this video, we will demonstrate how easy and straightforward it is to do that in action. I am your AppShip Pinoy expert, JP, and like most of you, I am so full of sheets. <laughs> so let's have a very simple use case. Let's say that we're developing a ticketing app, allowing the users to submit equipment support requests based on three main categories, network issues, software issues, and hardware issues. And based on our reporting requirements, these are the columns that are needed for the request in order to process the request ticket. I've also added the non-negotiable columns based on our best practices video. If you haven't seen that video, I really highly recommend that you watch that video. We created our app by importing that table. And now we will set our columns based on our reporting requirements. And now we will set up our columns based on our reporting requirements. So let's set them up as enum type columns and allow other values with a text base type and a drop down input mode. There you are. So our objective here is that when a user selects a category, then the user will be asked to select a subcategory but only show the appropriate options depending on the category that he selected. Now let's go back to our Google Sheet and here we have prepared the table for the subcategories available for each of the main category. We will take it even further by asking the user for the specifics based on the subcategory that the user selected. So here, we've already added the specific issues based on connection problems and so on and so forth. Now, what we need to do is to normalize this table. That means we would have to copy down and fill out all the blank cells on each of the rows, like so. Now, I've colored the cells to make this more illustrative for you, but this is not a requirement for implementation, all right? We will now import this as another table to our app. Let me just rename our sheet to, let's say, drop down, like so. And we'll add a table. And you can see that AppSheet adapted our sheet tab name. And we'll import this as a read-only table for now. And that sheet tab's name is also applied as the new table's name as well. Pretty cool, right? Here you are. And since this table will just be a reference for our drop-down boxes, we would not need to show any view or page for it. So we'll go to the view, select the drop-downs table, and then just position it as a ref. That way, it would not be available in any of the views unless it's something to have in mind as well and we are now ready to program our user interface to make our dynamic drop downs we will now edit the category column and turn that into a text plus valid if combination to make the drop down and if you haven't seen our video about different ways in creating drop downs in AppSheet then please check out that video so I'll turn this to text and then enter a valid if expression and the valid if expression will accept either a true, a false, or a list. And what we want is to return a list. So we will tell AppSheet to go to the drop downs table and then return to us the values in the category column, like so. Save it. And now you will see that there are three main categories that the user can select from. And AppSheet 
only shows the unique values because the text plus valid if combination would only show the unique values even though we told AppSheet to get all the values from the category column. Since there are only three unique values, then there are only three options showing up in our drop-down box. Now just for the fun of it, let me change this drop-down into an enum base text and buttons column uh, since there are only three options anyways so i think you know this one is uh, better and it saves additional clicks for the users so now the user can select among the three main categories and what we want to program now is the subcategory drop down and again what we want is that the subcategory drop down should give us all the different subcategories depending on the main category that was selected. So in this case, there are only two subcategories for each of the main category, and that's what we are expecting. So what we will do is for the subcategory, this time we'll make it a drop down using the text plus valid if combination. And instead of the category, we will tell AppSheet to select the drop downs table and return to us the subcategory column, like so. Uh, we will save it and let's see how it works. And by doing this, AppSheet would automatically detect that you are actually using the same table for both the category and the subcategory columns and that you are both using the valid if expressions to get the list of the options. And AppSheet will correctly identify that you are actually trying to create dependent drop down you will now notice that the subcategory field is no longer visible until the user selects a category so if we select software issues then that's the only time that the subcategory would appear and it should only show us the two different subcategories available under software issues and needless to say we will do the same approach for our specific issue column and just point it to the specific issue column of the drop downs table. So now, if I select software issues and then select Microsoft Office programs, then I would see the different Microsoft Office program options. If I select uh, the other program subcategory, then only Google Chrome, Acrobat Reader, and 7-Zip is available as an option. Unfortunately, since this is not an enum column, then AppSheet would automatically determine the input mode that makes most sense out of the available options. And right now, since there are only three, AppSheet determined and decided that uh, it would want to use the buttons. So if you want to have more control over that, no problem. You can always switch back to an enum column take those two boxes like text and drop down and as long as it's still using the valid if to supply the values app sheet would still determine that this is a dependent drop down related to the previous field and, test it out. and there you go the specific issue is now still showing as a drop down instead of buttons. Now I would be able to control it. And there is actually no limit as to how deep you want the dependencies to grow. You can have up to 10, 50, 100 columns, all dependent on the previous selection, no matter how many drop down boxes you have in your user forms. Of course, you just have to make sure that you properly set up the drop down options and ensure that the table is normalized so that AppSheet can automatically decide how the dependencies would go about. And this is the most straightforward way of creating dynamic dependent dropdowns in AppSheet. Of course, there are other methods like using a switch, if, if statements, and it all just depends on how complicated is your use case as well. So how about you? What approach do you use when you are creating your dynamic dependent dropdowns? Would you care to let us know in the comment section to help out our community? 
And if you need more tutorials, tips, and tricks to help you become more productive and efficient in the workplace, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. If this video has helped you in one way or another, then I would really appreciate if you click that like button. Come on, click it now. It's free. Click it. And if you have requests and suggestions on what you want me to cover next, then do please let me know. I read all your comments and who knows that I may even feature your request in one of our videos. So once again, this is your AppSheet Pinoy expert JB saying you and me and all of us, we are all full of seats. See ya. Take care.